Annie, that last email you sent was all the T roots paperwork, right? Yes. Okay. I like it better when you organize our paperwork for us in person. I know, me too. <laughs> I feel I also feel unorganized. <laughs> Thank you for coming, everybody. We're going to call this meeting to order. Um, my name is Natasha Yakovlev, also present this afternoon, Brian Campidelli and Helen Kahn. This meeting is a Zoom recording. Uh, is there anybody here for public comment this afternoon? Not seeing any public comment, we will move on to item number three, public hearing on an application for new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license and application for Common Victualler License, T Roots Incorporated, DBA, T Roots, 249 Main Street, Northampton, proposed manager, Weilan and Nicole Sow. Are those two people or is that one person? Uh, one. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, thank you for coming. Can you talk to us about your application that you've submitted this afternoon? Uh, just before we start, we need a, a motion to open the public hearing. Oh gosh, that's right, I'm sorry. Um, I'll make, uh, make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Brian, yes? Aye, yeah. Aye, thank you. Turn. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, are we good, Annie? Yep. Okay, great. Let's go on. Can you tell us a little bit about your application? Um, about myself? Yeah, and about your restaurant and your application for your wine and malt license and your common victualler. Oh, yes. Uh, like, a, I want to open a Taiwanese, like a street food restaurant in Northampton. Uh, the location is 249 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. My name is Mei Hui Hu. I am the attorney for the Applicant Corporation T Roots Inc. And Ms. Wei Lan Chao, um, also my client. And if you don't mind, uh, I, will, I will start talking about a little bit about the paperwork. And perhaps later, uh, Hui Lan can uh, answer any questions you may have. And certainly she would have uh, a chance to introduce herself in further detail. Um, this is a application for a common bachelor and BMY license. We are taking over the existing restaurant. It has been shut down for quite some time, and we are able to obtain a lease agreement with the current landlord. And uh, we are not going to make any renovation. We're taking over the restaurant business as is. Uh, there are 60 indoor seats. However, um, we are proposing additional outdoor seats as well uh, with five tables and uh, 14 uh, chairs for outside seating. Uh, other than that, um, it's pretty much the same operation as the previous uh, business. Uh, we are not seeking any change of uh, hours either. Okay. Thank you. Just to orient me, is this is this the green, which restaurant is this that is being taken over? Fresh pasta. Okay, fresh pasta. That's okay. Thank you. Annie, do you have something to um, contribute about the outdoor space? Yeah. Um, so back in 2011, uh, Fresh Pasta petitioned the city to use the out uh, the space right outside the 
building in the back um, for outdoor seating. It is city owned property. It's just the city parking lot. Um, so at that time, uh, city officials gave permission to use the area under the condition that um, the license holder only utilized the space between the months of May through October. Um, and then once the end of October comes, all materials used to cordon off the area, including tables and chairs, must be removed for the fall and the winter. Um, so I re reached out to the building department, fire department, and central services, and they are all three departments um, are okay with P Roots continuing to utilize that space as long as they follow the, the conditions. So they can't they can't exceed the footprint as it is now. So it can't be any bigger. Um, they are required to secure the materials used to cordon off the area um, and to protect diners from traffic. And again, all materials have to be removed um, starting November 1st through the end of April. So as long as they're we're all in they're all in agreement to follow those conditions, then um, the city's okay with letting them use that space again. Do you do any extension of that, or since it's already established for the previous restaurant, they will have to? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Do they need to do any sort of extension of premise for that, for the <coughs> wine and malt? Well, since, since um, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of an extension with the new license, because since okay. it's a new license, we're just applying for it up front with, for the outdoor space. Okay, that makes sense. Helen or Brian have questions or comments? No. Uh, no, I do not. No. Okay. I, just, I just have one thing. What are the hours of operation going to be? Uh, it's 11 to 9. I'm sorry? 11 to 9. 11, 11 to 9. To 9 p.m. Um, is that seven days a week? No, we close Tuesday. So six days a week? Yes. Okay. And what type of food do we have to look forward to coming down? Uh, it's Taiwanese food. Oh, great. That's street food, yeah. Nice. Great. We look forward to it. Thank you. Um, I guess without any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Well, uh, we just need to close the hearing. Okay, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now I can make a motion Aye. to approve the application, Annie? Yep. Okay. Uh, can, I, can we just include the conditions in the motion? Uh, outdoor conditions? Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the application for the new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license and application for common victualler license for T Roots Incorporated DBA T Roots at 249 Main Street, Northampton, with the conditions that the outdoor space behind the restaurant be um, have barriers to protect us traffic and have coordinating to keep wine and malts on premise. And do we need to say which months is closed and closed? And yes, and that the um, outdoor dining space be open the months of May through October and then all materials removed. Second. <laughs> Got it all in there. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, we'll need a motion for the common Vic too. Okay. Oh, I said that in the. Oh, you did. The... Great. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really cool to see you. I'm having you over. All right. Item number four: discussion of business operation with Highbrow Incorporated. And just for the record. Andrew, can you introduce yourself, please? Hey guys, how's it going? Andrew Brow from Highbrow. Great, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. As you know, we asked you to, come to, you to talk about the cordial license that we um, issued back in. So, um, I think there's a misunderstanding on what the cordial license is covering. So we know that your restaurant is serving drinks that are made with distilled spirits and mixed with other items that I would presume bring 
the beverage up to a sugar content level that makes it a cordial? <clears throat> oh, um, so the products that I'm getting is from approved vendors under the cordial uh, legislation. So all of the be all of the distilled spirits have been flavored. So they're all fall under that cordial 2.5% sugar minimum. So I haven't, I haven't gotten anything that's not a cordial approved on the list from the, the purveyors that I purchased from. What purveyors are you purchasing your um, So MS Walker, Martinetti, and um, Horizon Beverage. So our interpretation of this cordial license is that the the bottles that arrive from your distributor are marked as cordial or liqueur that are already at the two and a half percent. Correct. Correct. So the V1 cucumber vodka is not a cordial or a liqueur. So that was that felt that was on the list of approved cordials through the purveyor. So that's why when I asked them what I could purchase from them, they gave me a list of products that have the sugar content that I was able to purchase. So, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask any question, but go ahead. Well, I'm just, yeah, I, I think we need to straighten this out because I'm looking at a menu and I don't remember, I don't know if it's the current one or when I printed it off, but you're serving cocktails that say vodka, tequila. You know, um, yeah, on the menu, on the menu, it said that. Option, you know, and and no. to me, if I, that I can, looks like. I mean, I can change the menu to say exactly what kind of flavored vodka it is. I, I just put that and then the flavor as another ingredient to make it look more appealing. So I'm not using straight anything. I have I have like all the the invoice. I can provide you guys with invoices, uh, order guides, all the stuff. I, I'm not. I can't. Per they won't sell me anything unless it's. A, a approved on the cordial list or they could lose their license to distribute as well. So they wouldn't sell me something that they're not allowed to sell. So, yeah, I mean, I'm confusing. I'm just also thinking as a consumer. So yes, I think we do need to be in this so that we are understanding that you're actually buying cordials, not yeah. buying spirits and then mixing right. and create cordials. Um, but I'm just thinking if I came into your restaurant and I ordered the martini, I would think you thinking I'm getting a $12 martini alcohol license like that to me looks like you know it's it seems very misleading it's early it's it's a cordial and not a martini or you know an old-fashioned well it is um, it is a martini or an old-fashioned but it's a cordial spirit used to produce that mixture it, i yeah i I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking when you applied for this license, you know, I look back at the minutes and you said you were going to make some after dinner drinks, you yeah. know, and, and, and like, these do not say cordial to me. And maybe it's a misunderstanding of what a cordial is on my part, but, but these look like straight up alcohol cocktails that, and in terms of, you know, and you have a wine and malt license and a cordial license versus an all alcohol license. Yeah. And we need to look at the reality of people are paying thousands of dollars for alcohol yeah. licenses and you're getting this with a wine and malt license, and I think we need to be very careful about what it is you're actually allowed to serve. And I don't know if this is something that we need to re-examine or we need to examine with an expert from ABCC or sort of who comes in yeah. to make sure that this really is cordial and that you're advertising it as such. So I don't think that I'm getting the same thing that I could at a restaurant with an alcohol license that I'm getting at your place. Yeah. Because otherwise, competition-wise, I mean, it's it's, there's no fairness at all. And I feel like we'd be going down a slippery slope. So that's my input. Um. Brian, do you have a comment? This sounds like you're gonna uh, define the um, cordial um, definition a little better. Um, you know, I know there are some all alcohol licenses that are available. So um, if you're up for that and um, you wanna make the investment, you know, that's always your choice. But uh, um, I think once the commission takes a look at that a little deeper and, and does a little research, we might uh, be back in touch for sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're at a, a disagreement here in that. Um... Let me have a question. Um, Andrew, you have in invoices? They actually say cordials on and so on and so forth? 
I mean, it says the product. The product is part of a portal approved list from the, the state or the, the company. And have you forwarded that uh, list to the commission? I can, do that. I can do that right away. Yeah. yeah, anything that you can actually help, you know, uh, or send to us would definitely benefit you. Okay. Um, and then I'm sure there'll be a decision that's made, you know, down the line or, okay. or maybe even today. But I would say um, if you've been serving those kinds of drinks and you you think you're under the, the right of the law, then, yeah. you know, you need to just go ahead and forward all of your information that you can to help with that. Okay. Absolutely. Um, we have someone who has something to say. And hi, Amy. Hi. So I'm... Um, this is not why I'm here today, but I happen to have a lot of experience with cordial license when I worked in Boston. I worked for Myers and Chang, which had a cordial license as well. Um, there's a very distinct difference between a cordial license and a liquor license, and it has a very distinct difference in competition. Um, Andrew would not be able to sell like a Jack and Coke. Like that's just not something you'd, you'd ever be able to have at Highbrow. Um, the ABCC, sorry, am I saying yeah. that right? Um, actually doesn't have, unfortunately doesn't have a very clear definition of what a cordial license is. It is literally any alcohol that is distilled with um, other uh, flavors to, as Andrew said, to have the right amount of um, percentage to it. So I, I just want to just since I'm here, and since I happen to have this knowledge, I'm just going <laughs> to, to, to and, and, I, and I do, you know, I, I know, I'm sorry. I am, I'm a competitive business. It, it, it's not necessarily helping me by, by standing up for Andrew, but I'm just, I'm letting you know that like for, for everything that I know and for how he's writing his menu and like what he's getting and whatever else, it would be really weird for me to find out that this wasn't all above board. So I'm just throwing right. it out. Well, I, and also, again, based on our interpretation of it and knowledge of it, there's, there's still a disconnect here. So um, I think that's easily solved. Um, I know some bourbons make the list, but um, let's be honest, our opinions don't really matter. It's the law. So if certain things fall under the law. That's, uh, sorry, that's, that's kind of exactly what I was, what I was trying to get at. So we, we, I think we still... I've, I've never seen this list of things that are allowable based on the legislation for the court permit in terms of what alcohol. Um, That's why I asked for them. Yeah. Because I don't have any either. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll send those over after the after the meetings uh, all set. But uh, that that is the thing that the, the liquor purveyors themselves, if they were to sell me a product and you guys were to find out about it, they would lose out way bigger than I would. I mean, they're doing multi multi million dollars in sales. So they wouldn't even risk that to sell it to me. So that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, is, if it is not labeled as a cordial or a liqueur, <clears throat> our understanding is it's not allowable. So that's that's what that's where we need to start with information is this list of invoices. From yeah. The, the, oh, sorry, Helen, go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. Um, no? I'm wondering if the next piece too, and I don't know if there is something um, debating this um, in the laws or with ABCC about how it is presented on the menu. Um, and that it, I don't know, I mean, I would think that it needs to be very explicit and these need to be called cordial, but they need to be called exactly what they are so that when I'm ordering, I don't think I'm getting some straight vodka or tequila or whatever it is. And, and I don't know if there's anything, since this is new for us, you know, we're working our way through it. I don't know if there's a piece that says how it's presented on the menu. And I don't know, Amy, if you can speak to that, put you on the spot, but since you were doing no, that. No, 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 absolutely. So yeah, so again, so um, at Myers and Chang and at Copa, both of the places that I and, and Jesse worked, um, they both had cordial license. I don't think that any of the guests knew the difference other than the fact that like, when our friend who only drinks, you know, Jack and Cokes came in, he's like, what do you mean I can't get a Jack and Coke? Okay. Um, because that's not something that they're, that they're able to do. So you know, there's like gins that have honey in them. And there's, you know, again, like Andrew was saying, like vodkas that have cucumber and that sort of thing. So um, it is, it's, it's a little confusing and a little, and a little weird. And actually for the most part, guests get upset that they can't get something straight because yeah. there is nothing straight because that's not allowed by, by the license. Right. So, um, so in any case, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, all of you guys are doing your due diligence and Andrew's doing his due diligence. Like, 
I'm sure it's all gonna be shown above board. And just just to let you know where I'm coming from and my experience of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Annie, how how do we move this forward then? Because oh. I think there is an actual definition of a cordial and liqueur in chapter 138. Um, and I'm just going to read it for the record. Um, all alcoholic beverages manufactured or produced by mixing or redistilling neutral spirits, brandy, gin, or other distilled spirits with or over fruits, flowers, plants, or pure juices therefrom, or other natural flavoring materials or with ex extracts derived from infusions, percolations, or maceration of such materials and containing no less than two and one half percent sugar by weight. So I don't know if, if Andrew, if you're, you're using a liqueur and then using other beverages to mix it and then calling it a cordial. <coughs> no. But so the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, they are the ones that classify cordials because they need to tax them at a certain rate. Um, so if, there is, if you have, say, does the V1 cucumber vodka, for example, does it say cordial or liqueur on it the- It doesn't say cordial or liqueur on it. It just been the, the purveyors have testing, I believe, on, on site, each of the, the purveyors. So they, they literally won't sell me anything if it, unless it's on a certain list. So the list is actually the list that we provided to you in, I think it was February, um, which came from the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, because they're the ones that, that, set, that set the tax rate for these, for these cordials. So if it's on that list, then according, because the ABCC goes by that list, if it's on that list, then you're okay. Um, but if you can only sell products that are labeled as a liqueur or cordial, and if they come to your doorstep with that label, then you're okay. But I mean, Chipotle infused tequila and Bar Hill gin are not permissible under a cordial license. Yeah, can I just reference the document you're talking about that we provided in February is the chapter four class and designation document? Yes. Yes, where, so Andrew, do you still have this? Okay. Um, can you email it to Andrew? Yeah. So that he can reference it. So pages 4.8 through 4.10 specifically outline what is allowable as a liqueur or a cordial. And that's, I mean, the, that's what we based our decision on was specifically looking at those items. So, I mean, this, it, if based on what you've said that your purveyors have provided you with a list that is allowable, that's in contradiction to this list that we, we are working from. So that's part of, part of the problem. And Annie, I don't really know where to go from this because I know that we had asked for these drinks to not be provided until this was sorted out. Um, and I don't feel like we're gonna sort it out at this meeting without seeing further documentation. Yeah, um, I guess there's, I guess there's just a little disagreement with how the commission views it and how Andrew views it. Um, I would say documentation, all receipts, itemized invoices, all of that should probably be sent to the commission for I'm, review. I'm also going to reach out to the purveyors and see where this list of approved 2.5% sugar spirits uh, came from uh, because they, they honestly wouldn't sell it to me if their license was in jeopardy. Um, so I'm going to get that. I'll, I'll talk to them as well and see because they sell all these restaurants, like Amy said, in Boston and all that. So I guess I'll see what their list, where they got their list from what ABC or, or whatever as well. And what, Amy, what time frame do we need to have for this? Uh, that's up to you guys. Um, 
What was the, I couldn't understand the question. What did, what did you ask Natasha? I was just asking what time frame we want to okay. have information in because our next meeting isn't until we haven't discussed, I think, our next meeting. Right. I mean, I would say we need to know sooner rather than later. I mean, we need perhaps an interim meeting just because if there's a misunderstanding and you're serving spirits that aren't considered um, cordials, then you're, it's like you're serving alcohol without a license and we can't really have that happen, yeah. you know? Which um, is that would, we wouldn't, like, however this shakes out, we just can't, yeah. it has to be coming up and we can't have um, it's the cordial license if that's what's happening. So have you considered buying an all alcohol? License? I did in the beginning, but the one that was available was like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I just didn't have that kind of money. Um, I mean, with the current situation right now, I don't think I'd be in a position to to entertain that at all. Yeah, and I guess that's my point too. I want to be very careful that we're that someone with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar license that you're not serving similar items. You know, well, that I am not even. Your head and saying no. Flavor, in terms of alcohol. So. Yeah. Or, but that you can serve a twelve dollar cocktail with the wine yep. malt license instead of a tens of thousands of dollar license. Yep. So, um, so, so for Helen and Brian, we had sent the cease and desist last week. Do we want that to stand until we have this sorted out and ask for this information by this day next week? I mean, in my opinion, if those truly somehow fall under uh, the okay list. I understand ABCC, but you know what? Um, things are overthrown all the time by attorneys and so on and so forth, just because they have a clear, you know, they have their opinion and so on and so forth. My point is if Andrew gets the information that Annie wants to look over, you know, say within the next 24 hours, and we can all look at it before Friday, you know, because I would hate for a business because I'll say it again, I'm pro business. I would hate for him to lose revenue that he has every right to do and earn over the weekend, which is his, probably his busiest time. So I wouldn't want to impede that. So if he is in the right, then let's figure it out um, as quick as we can. So Thank that's you. my opinion. That's where I'm at. And is that realistic for you, Andrew? To, I mean, I guess how soon could you get that information together? <laughs> I'll start gathering it right away. Yeah. Can I just, can I ask a question? So Andrew, the, so say the cucumber vodka for, for one, it's infused with a flavor, but is yeah. it over two and a half percent sugar that's by weight? Correct. Correct. And they, they won't sell me anything that's less than that because they can be in jeopardy of standing in front of the ABCC directors like I'm sitting in front of you guys and they could get their liquor license their their license to distribute liquor full so they wouldn't sell me any they won't sell me anything besides that my list that I'm able to get is very limited it's only a handful of different flavored whiskeys and vodkas and things like that so I don't have like a giant back bar. I have like 10 bottles that I use 10 different things you know so it's not I, I, it's not like a full bar it's like a flavored whiskey couple flavored vodkas, the one flavored tequila, the flavored gin, and Aperol. You know, it's not like I'm serving like a whole open bar. Okay. So, so then it So it's all, it's all, it's all yeah. the, everything in that list that I'm able to buy has 2.5% minimum, if not more. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm looking online at like the V1 cucumber vodka and it it says it's a hundred percent spelt craft vodka, naturally flavored with cucumber and a hint of Meyer lemon. Yep. So I mean to me that's vodka. But it's flavored vodka. It's got a flavoring with the but sugar. It's, but is it two and a half percent? You gotta, I mean, it would have to be or the liquor purveyor wouldn't sell it to me. I don't, so. I don't know if we can, we can go off just because the, I don't know. Well, that's why I'm saying that we should try and do the research before this Friday, if at all possible. I mean, 
the bottom line is my, my wife's a chemist and she used to teach truth in advertising about food and so on and so forth and reading the labels and you'd be shocked at what's actually in some of these things and they don't necessarily call it what the layman um, person can understand. Right. You know, So it has many different names and so on and so forth and I don't know that alcohol is actually uh, required to do the same. It's a cordial. But if you could actually get a hold of Paul, um, is it Paul? Yep. Paul Paul. yep. I'm Paul sure Paul. he would give you, you know, whatever you needed. So, cause yep. I mean, it's his, in, in his best interest as well. I right. mean, so it's all we're looking for is just, yep. you know, no. Yeah, and I'm not trying to hide anything I'm or sure, under the rug, you know. I'm sure the commission holds a little bit of liability as well. We have to follow the law. Yeah, of course. So, and we have to hold you guys accountable. Yep. So, I mean, if yep. everybody can work within that, mm -hmm. you know, that's all we're saying. So yep. you can get your stuff quickly and we can do our research, in my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, you know, I, I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. What do you think? If we have information within 24 hours, it's not unreasonable, but that's going to require us as a commission to have another discussion within 24 hours. So right. are you available tomorrow then to do that? Yeah. Okay. Helen, are you available? It's uh, maybe later in the day. I don't know if I can make four, but we can talk about it. Okay. It's like, it has to be five or something like that. Yeah. Oh, Andrew, if you had to not serve any of those drinks over the weekend, do you have other drinks you can serve? I mean, I have beer and wine. I would take a slight hit in business for sure, but I mean, I have beer and wine. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, well, just a uh, few things, but one, we can't have a meeting tomorrow. Um, it's not 48 hour notice. Um, so we couldn't do that. Um, but the, <coughs> excuse me, the other thing is, um, <coughs> we got an, an interpretation from attorney Seawald um, uh, about his um, understanding of cordials. Um, so he, mentions that the beverage must arrive at the licensed premise having already been mixed or redistilled so as to contain no less than two and a half percent sugar by weight. Any oh, sure. other alcoholic beverage, including those infused with flavors that is not over two and a half sugar <laughs> by weight cannot be served under the license even if mixed with a cordial liqueur. Cordials and liqueur are labeled and taxed as such through the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau. Therefore, a cordial's liqueur licensee can sell only products that are labeled as cordial or liqueur. Applying this to the advertisement published by Mr. Brow, it is clear that Chipotle infused tequila, V1 cucumber vodka, and Bar Hill gin are not permissible under a cordial liqueur license. So that's his understanding and interpretation. And that's well. That's the information that we're working with. Yeah, it seems pretty clear. So you're saying it, it needs to say cordial on the label? It needs to be labeled cordial or liqueur. So not classified. It has to be labeled. Labeled. Hmm. Okay. It said okay. that in the um the legislation that was passed. That's what it said on there. It had to be labeled. That was from the from the document, the law document. <laughs> Are you asking or? Yeah, no, I'm asking the question because I didn't um, remember. Anything. I never saw that when you guys passed it and it was like chapter L, whatever it was. I didn't see anything about the labeling saying cordial or liqueur in it. Yeah. Um, just to quick. jump in, I, I know for a fact. So Myers and Chang and Copa, who, that both of them have been in business for over 10 years. Both of them only ever had cordial licenses. I know what's behind their bar, and it's the same as what Andrew's talking about. There's only like 10, maybe 12 bottles that they can that they can use, and I can assure you that almost none of them have like a specific label on them that says cordial. Or I mean, Annie, when you were reading off what it specifically lists as a liqueur or a cordial, that's exactly the definition that needs to be used. But that doesn't ever come up on a label because it's not. <laughs> On the other side of things, it's not good advertising to be like selling that in a liquor store or to another restaurant that has a full license. Like it, it kind of downplays what it is. So just to jump in. And I, uh, thank you, Amy, because um, I think uh, your experience is really valuable. And I'm, I pulled up Myers and Chang's men menu and they are, they do just talk about gin and tequila 
you know, and it, and I'm sure they still have just the cordial license. And so they are advertising it the same way, just, you know, not calling it a cordial and just saying that they're adding tequila and gin. But it's, so, I mean, I, I'm taking this as an education for myself about this because we, as I say, I think this is our first cordial license, right? That we put out there. And so I think there was, we needed this clarification um, and understanding of what exactly um, makes the cordial. And I, you know, I am learning now hearing through from Amy and through from Andrew about um, these definitions. And I think it's just different than what we, we thought, I mean, we thought he'd be making Irish coffees and things like that, but you know, obviously this is, this is a broader definition than, than I was familiar with. So. Annie, uh, excuse me, Annie, on, on the ABCC's um, definition, it just basically says the 2.5% by weight or more, or does it also say label? It does not say label. All right. So, I mean, an interpretation of the law and the law are two different things. So, I don't know um, if those things are, if you can get, here's, here's my opinion and I'm just going to throw it out there. Andrew, if you can get that stuff to us in 24 hours and we can review it separately, yeah. do we need a meeting that if it actually hits the law, the ABCC, yeah. and not attorney Seawald's opinion or, or um, how did you put it? Uh, the way he put it out there, I would say you got to go with what the ABCC and the state law says. So, and if those qualify to me, uh, they're the ones in charge. They wrote the law. And, um, you know, Amy, you, you, gave, you gave great points as well. But I, I just think it requires a little uh, uh, research. And I think it's uh, our obligation and uh, to do our due diligence and figure it out so that we're not hindering any business. Thank you. Can we do this? If Andrew gets the paperwork to you tomorrow, you review it. Compare who, who, who am I emailing this to? Annie? Up to Annie. Okay. Um, yep. You review it, compare it with everything else. If you find that there is a discrepancy that merits the cease and desist until further conversation, then you can let Andrew know that. And if it doesn't require that, then you can let Andrew know that as well. And we move forward. Is it? Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. Where yeah. do I stand as of now? Do I need not serve anything or? I, I mean, on, it, only because it's out of fairness to other restaurants and just as a matter of like figuring this out, if you give us until tomorrow and, and carry that cease and desist tonight for your operating hours, I mean, I just think that's fair, but it's up, you know, I, I, my other commissioners can weigh in on how they feel about that. Um, I guess my opinion is, did we jump the gun by sending a cease and desist if we didn't know all the facts? Well, I think that's a moot point because I don't know if a cease and desist happened. So it's it does, it's not a it's not a moot point because the cease and desist holds water. It holds weight. So whether or not he stopped or not is not again, it's not our opinion. He's if he chooses if it is the law and he breaks the law, that's on him. He owns that hundred percent. We sent the cease, uh, cease and desist. Were we a hundred percent in understanding the law? in sending that that's all i'm i mean as a business owner i would question the same thing so. well for me i i didn't i i was selling the drinks because i thought what you were saying was i was buying like pure distilled vodka at provisions and mixing stuff in and making my own stuff so i i which i wasn't or i have not done so i thought that somebody reported that i was using unapproved products on that end well here's I didn't the think point. Of my products. andrew i'm sorry to interrupt you but yeah. here's the point i'm going to say it again the law is the law Yep. You own 100% of the liability on this. Yeah. Yep. So you choose. We sent you to cease and desist, right or wrong. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. If it yep. turns out we're right. Yep. I would. I would suppose. You know, that's on you. You need to figure out that liability. So, okay. um, you know, yep. uh, Natasha. Well, you know, and Helen weigh in. But you tell me. What do you think? You you want to uh, hold strong on it and and go with it or leave it up to that uh the opinion of andrew or you know i mean we're only talking about 24 hours too so i would rather okay. you lose one day in sales than potentially and if i'm lose, wrong and yeah, yeah yeah well potentially lose your license yeah, yeah, yeah. right you know what i'm saying so you know you got to make the right choice my friend so all right it's up to you, you. appreciate it yeah well is that okay with natasha and helen I am confused about where you were just leaving that, Brian. Um, you're saying that 
to so in other words, we, we sent, as a commission, we sent a cease and desist. Right. I'm not convinced that we're 100% right because I'm not convinced. That's why we're asking for this paperwork to do this research. So it's like putting the cart before the horse, in my opinion. But if we are right, great. I mean, we did the right thing. Um, well, we can't have it both ways. I mean, we set up the cease and desist to gather the information and have this conversation. So that's fine then. Then hold on the cease and desist for a night and then within the 24 hours, like you said, we, we get the information and you know, if it's 48, it is what it is, but hopefully you're back up and doing your thing for the weekend. And if we find out differ, then you know, you gotta look about maybe investing in a, a full spirit license. Helen, are you? <laughs> I don't want to complicate things. I, I have to say I'm leaning, surprisingly, since I've learned a lot during this discussion, I'm leaning in the direction of saying that without a cease and desist, to let him continue serving. And as Brian's pointing out, if he, we find out he's breaking the law, then he's in deeper water, but give us, you know, within 24 hours, getting that information. And um, I'm hoping that it says that we've all been educated and that everything's been fine, you know. But so, so I guess I'm leaning towards saying, allow him to continue to serve, but, you know, get that information within 24 hours. Okay. Andy, does, does this um, process work then? If he gets you the paperwork by tomorrow and you can do a review? Yeah, I, I'll review it and I'll send it to all three of you so you can take a look. Okay. So um, we'll need receipts, any any documentation that you have, including if you can get it, the list of cordials. From the distributors? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can do that. And City Hall shut down, so email you all this stuff. Yeah, you can just email it to me. So um when you got the cordial license in february so it'll need to go back from february until now there needs to be all my invoices for that far back yep all right it's gonna I, that's gonna be a lot of scanning and stuff i got a lot of stuff so um i'll send you as much as i can possibly get at that point um but it's all that's gonna be a lot of paperwork but that's fine all right Thank you, Andrew. Are we are we closing this conversation then for that agenda item? Yes, I think so. Just Andrew. one last thing, Annie, as well. Um, I just heard from uh, an insurance company that I uh, I reached out on that for question as well, and they said anything with a certain um, they weren't sure on the percentage, but any percentage of sugar, it is it is considered a true cordial. So that is just another industry weighing in. And I'm sure insurance agencies wouldn't insure you if you weren't, uh, if you were doing the wrong thing as well. I mean, so. the ABCC paperwork we're looking at right now says two and a half percent, so. That's what my point is. Yeah, they yeah. have to go with, with that at least. Well, they didn't say two and a half because they're insurance agents. They don't know exactly yet. They're, they're okay. not at work, so. But no, I agree, 100%. Okay. Um, Andrew, thank you very much. Thank you. For the conversation and for coming this afternoon. We appreciate it. Amy, thank you for contributing to it. And we'll get thank you, you Amy. Shortly. All right. Thank All right. you. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So, moving on then to item number four, we are reviewing review and approve review and approval of the application for extension of premises onto public spaces for Belly of the Beast Incorporated, 159 Main Street. And for the record, I'm going to introduce yourself. Hi, yes, Amy Francis, co-owner of Belly of the Beast, um, yes. Wow. You want to um, talk to us a little bit about your application to extend? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, uh, so we, uh, <laughs> we're uh, in the midst of um, kind of uh, reconceptualizing a little bit and, and wanting to um, be sure that we can work in the new world that we all are living in. And in doing that, um, part, part of that plan is to have outdoor seating as best as we can. Um, and so we, we have an understanding that we would be able to, I have like a little drawing that I sent over to Annie. I don't know if um, she was able to send it to you guys, but of um, using the uh, red brick spaces you know, um, in front of our establishment, as well as we're hoping for one table to be literally 
right in front of our windows, which we used to have like outdoor benches during the nice months um, for people to just sit right there. So there, there should be enough room for a small table there. Um, and then we're thinking, um, uh, I think we would like to use the, um, like those sailboat type of um, uh, shade coverings like Iconica is using. Um, uh, trying to, we haven't quite pinpoint where we would attach them, but but figuring that out and um, and putting that together. I don't know that we would really have everything up and running until September first, just because we're we're scrambling to kind of do it all um, and like have a little bit of beautification, you know, with some flowers and and that sort of thing to make it a a nice place that people will want <laughs> want to come and sit and eat. Um, uh, so uh, we're we're just trying to to kind of. We were trying to like hustle and scramble just to make this meeting so that we can move forward in um, in putting this together for the fall. I'm also curious um, because I happen to be here and heard the Viva Pasta. So I have been thinking about in the winter time, at least like in the in the mild winter months, if we were able to put up. Um, those heating lamps, you know, that um, you see in cities outside New York has them and Boston has them and that sort of thing. And so I was thinking about like, if we would be able to, I don't know how long the season is for this as of yet. Maybe you guys don't even know either. Again, November in the 1st. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, so literally, so like every, so what people are now calling like restaurant row, like where um, Veracruz, Veracruzana and like that sort of thing it, like all of that is going to be coming down November 1st yes wow okay okay well I guess we'll just deal with that as as we go okay um, Helen and Brian do you have any comments or questions about the application well I uh, once again I I'm not seeing the drawing and I don't know if it was an early earlier email Annie or do yeah. that yeah, you have it. Um, you also have that spreadsheet. Oh, oh, wait. Hang on. I can send it to you again. Oh, there it is right there. Sorry about that. Okay, got it. Um, Do you need the application again? I can, I can send no, it. No, I, I, I found it. I'm looking at it now. Okay. Um, so, um, Amy, you are, you've got the newspaper boxes outside your space. Yes. So we're, we're hoping that those can be moved. There's plenty, <laughs> I can see it from my window. There's plenty of room on the other side of the um, crosswalk to move them to the other side of like TD Bank. And then same with like the trash and recycling. Um, they can just be moved to the other side of the, um, uh, that stanchion that's used for parking, you know, the parking meter thing. So um, trash and recycling, I think, are bolted into the sidewalk. Is that correct? Yeah, they're bolted down and on concrete pads, um, so we can't move those. Um, the newspaper boxes, moving those is easy um, since they're not bolted down, um, but there would be some restrictions. You'd have to move them the shortest distance possible. Um, you would have to move them and you'd have to notify the newspaper box vendors. I'm happy to do both of those things and, and it would be the shortest distance possible. It's literally just on the other side of the, the, the crosswalk. And then I guess I'll relook at our plans for where the trash and recycling are because we're obviously not gonna have tables there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I don't know if there's Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I just don't know if there's gonna be kind of like what they've done at Veracruzana and, you know, I don't know if there's gonna be any room for us to take over parking. So um, yes, there will be, um, which is, that's kind of the bigger issue um, because um, things might w go differently for you and you might have a difference, uh, you ha might have more space to work with in the street um, once, the plan is implemented. So, I mean, you said you wouldn't be going until September 1st and the, the street project is gonna happen before then. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, 
I don't know if you still want to go with this plan or if it's something you want to hold off on until you until the city makes a formal announcement, which should be soon. So, so I guess I guess my conundrum is that I need to come before you all <laughs> and get your approval, which I so appreciate your time and 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 hustle and everything that you're doing for all of the city right now. Um, I don't know that I can come before you all again before September 1st, though. Isn't the next meeting for this like sometime mid-September? Yes, except for once the street gets reconfigured, we'll probably have multiple applications. So we'll probably have to have a meeting in between now and the September meeting to hear all those applications for people that do want to go on the street. Okay, then then I guess I guess I'll... I guess I'll like roll the dice and take my chances that the street's going to be redone and that we'll resubmit a new application and I won't, I won't take up any further amounts of your time tonight with, with this plan. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't want you to have to go through what you're going to go through and come to find out that everything's going to be reconfigured anyways, and you're going to have a different area to work with. Okay. Um, I had just suggested Amy come because I was worried that she would miss this meeting and then be left high and dry. So I figured better to talk to you earlier. Yeah, no, so, oh, sorry. So I'm so glad you were here, Amy. Happens <laughs> 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 First Thursday of every month, Amy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, and then, and then I guess because I I am here and I have the floor. How, like how would restaurants go about asking for longer for like if we wanted to go into November and December I was thinking January is probably out nobody's going to be around but November December February March if we had heating lamps if it's as mild a winter as the past two winters I can't imagine that people aren't going to even want want to sit outside I think I I don't I'm not 100% but I believe that the November 1st date is is a state date it, and it's actually November 15th, but the city did November 1st. Okay. Um, I could be wrong and I don't, I, who knows what the next few months are gonna bring. Um, I don't know about the heating lamps. I would say the fire department has to be contacted yeah. about those, maybe building, um, but I don't know. Everything's so up in the air. Um, okay. I don't, I don't want to be in your hair more, but anything, no, you're fine. anything, anything that like you guys can point, you know, like if, if it takes like me, like rounding up the other restaurants and like bringing you guys a proposal or like something that we can do for Northampton or not, I understand that it's a state thing. Just I'll anything be in her hair if, if, if it's possible <laughs> for you to go later than November 1st, yeah. but it is a state thing tied to the um, ABCC too, for the like licenses. Well, I mean, even if we're not allowed to serve alcohol out outdoors, even if we're just allowed to serve food, like that's going to be beneficial for every single restaurant in Northampton to be able to do if if we're able to find some sort of way to like have people feel cozy. I um I'm on the the Zoom meeting calls for the downtown, like reorganizing the street. I can bring it up. At okay. some point, um, once everything's been implemented, I can just kind of float the idea and see what others have to say. Okay, let me know how I can be supportive or active or okay. advocacy, whatever. Okay, okay. So then I guess I'll see you guys maybe before September first in a different way. Yeah, there'll there'll be a formal press release, and um, you'll you'll hear about it, and then you can you'll probably just want to fill out a new application with a new plan for, for the area that you're given. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Do you need, do you need yeah. anything? Yeah, no. Great, okay, no. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Yeah. Okay, moving on to item number five. This is the violation hearing for 2123 Center Street, LLC, DBA, the basement, Center Street Cafe at 21 Center Street, manager of record, Eric Sheward, date of violation, February 23rd, 2020. 
violations alleged 204 CMR section 2.0110, every license or storage permit shall be displayed on the premises covered by the license or permit in a conspicuous place where it can easily be read. Um, so, Annie, I'm opening the, do I need a motion to open the hearing then? Uh, yes. Okay, then I will make a motion to open this hearing as um, outlined in item number six. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the date of this hearing, do we have a stenographer? We do. Okay, hi. How are you? Uh, the date of this hearing is Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. Uh, the meeting started at 5 p.m. It's now 4.55. Um, we did receive the hearing letter that was sent. Uh, oh, wait. You, Mandy, you sent out a hearing letter, certified mail? I did, and I got a green receipt card, so it's confirmed. Okay, so we received that. Um, I've read the violations um, outlined on the agenda. And so now our witnesses. Um, we have a statement from Chief Casper. Hi there. Annie, is there a process for swearing in? There is. It should be on your violation checklist that I sent. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, so at, uh, those who will testify, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. All right, so your statement, please. Sure, this is very brief. Uh, on February 23rd, 2020, at about 1.09 in the morning, officers Ross and Cook went into the basement just on a liquor establishment check. Uh, they had been in there on February 2nd and noticed that the liquor license was not visible. So on February 2nd, they had issued a verbal warning saying you need to display your liquor license. So when they went back in on February 23rd, they observed that the liquor license was still not uh, posted. They spoke with the manager, Nan Bui, B-U-I, uh, and asked him to produce the liquor license. And the manager reached onto a shelf located behind the bar and pulled out a manila folder, manila colored folder, and then displayed the license. Those are the, the facts of the case. Okay. Um, then Annie, we move on to the license holder now. Um, yeah. Thank you for fumbling through this with us. Um, okay, is Eric on the call at the moment? Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, Eric. Um, um, can you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Can you swear or affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Great, thank you. And uh, do you have a statement? Um, no, I'm not gonna refute uh, what was discussed uh, by the chief. Um, I was present that evening um, after the officers had left. The license was in a folder. It was produced to me by the bartender. The license had previously been hung on the back bar um, as it has been for, I think we've had the basement going into 16 or 17 years. And my understanding from what I was told was that it was removed and placed back in the folder for cleaning. But I was not aware that that license was not hung on the 2nd of February. So uh, the only thing I can tell you is that we're license holders at five other establishments and that we've always prominently um, displayed all of our licenses, uh, including at the basement. And so, uh, you know, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dispute anything that was discussed. I did have a conversation with the bartenders that if anything had fallen or was moved for cleaning purposes or any other purposes that they have to be prominently displayed. I believe everybody's on that, you know, under, understanding of that at this point. And I was a little surprised that, that I'm hearing this that, cause I was not aware of the verbal warning and I was also present, you know, during the, that night in February, but obviously not when the, uh, not when the officers had come in and given a verbal warning. Okay, thank you. Um, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, commission discussion. Any comment from Helen or Brian? I mean, it seems. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just it seems pretty straightforward. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, you're still on the record. Yes, thank you. 
Yeah, so um, not really a discussion, just more like a question. Is it hung now? Do we have proof of it? Well, the, yeah, the, the establishment's been closed and we've, we've actually taken everything down from the back of the bar, done a ton of cleaning. So um, I, I should be able to answer that. It was hung literally the next day um, after I was aware that, um, that there was a violation um, because the bartender had explained to me that they had come in. Um, so I'm not at the establishment now, but um, we had, uh, I think there was one, two, three, four different licenses that were, um, that were put up in the back bar the very next day. So, uh, but it, to answer your question, Brian, right now is we've, you know, we've pulled out coolers, we've pulled out, I mean, just about everything that we can has been cleaned out of there and uh, moved around. So, but yes, they were prominently displayed on, I believe by that Monday. So I think the violation occurred, it was actually our Saturday night of business had occurred prior to closing. Um, and that's why uh, the chief had mentioned it was on the 23rd, which I think was after 1 a.m. on that, that Sunday morning, but it was our Saturday night of business. And by Monday, um, after I was notified of that, that evening or su Sunday morning, and on Monday, they were, they were all there. They were all behind the bar. They weren't, they, as should be, they weren't prominently hung and visible to someone that walked up to the bar. All right. Do you plan on reopening? Uh, yes, we do. Um, but okay. the issue right now is just... We don't serve, uh, you know, there's no service of food in that establishment, similar to the Iron Horse Pearl Street and the Calvin. And so, unfortunately, we're at the mercy, it looks like, of a vaccine and, you know, with live entertainment. And the basement is a dance and a small venue for dance and live entertainment. And it, unfortunately, it looks like it could be well over a year before we're able to open again. So it's pretty much mothballed until such time as we're able to do so. Any problem with sending a photo to Annie via email that shows the license being hung? Um, yep, yeah, I have no issue, but it, I'm not in, I'm in the Hoyle office now, so I can't. No, I don't it. mean right now. I'm just saying, yeah. that, you know, versus trying to send a police officer out and meet somebody, as long yeah. as that's okay with the rest of the commission, yeah. that's just um, one thing that I, I would suggest. Yep. I agree. Um, how yeah. you I'm sorry that, you know, we've taken this kind of time. I know Annie's office has had to send out multiple letters and, uh, and with all the cancellations and, you know, for such a, well, you know, I don't want to diminish this, but in comparison to other things, it's a, it's a, you know, a minor violation to take up so much time in terms of the commission and Annie's office. So I apologize for that. We've been a license holder in pretty good standing for many, many years. So I'm more embarrassed by it than anything. Yeah, I guess my only question is, do you know, so you're saying that it sounds like they came in February 2nd and then came back to check on February 20th. So I'm assuming that it hadn't been hung at all during that time is that your oh i guess uh, there was no so i was not aware and i'm present every night we're open i was not aware that there was a verbal warning given on february 2nd um so that's something that i will look into from the bartender but that i was very much aware of the february or evening of business on the 22nd that saturday i was aware of of that um situation um, that happened that early sunday morning okay so but in all likelihood it hadn't been uh, displayed for that month for most of the month of February at least I don't believe that I don't believe that's the case but I, I, you know because our license I mean I'm, I'm there and I'm, the licenses have been visible to me but there was some work that had been done during the course of that month so I can't honestly tell you if they were hung for a period of a week two weeks and then taken down again there was work that was done behind the bar there was work that was done on the beer coolers and you know so sometimes just based on the very limited nature of space it's a very small bar establishment and there's very limited space behind that bar. So when they do work, they'll oftentimes take down and remove, including our credit card machine and different things, they'll remove things from the back bar. So I can't honestly answer that. I wouldn't want to give you the wrong information. I don't know the answer to that. I do know that I've been there, you know, we're only open three to four nights a week at that establishment and I've been there on all the nights we were open. And if those licenses weren't visible then it probably would have been pretty noticeable to me, but I can't answer that in good faith and give you an honest answer with, without knowing that they were physically hung there. Okay. I see in a lot of places they actually put them in an eight by ten and they physically screw it to the wall. So we've purchased um we've actually purchased a larger glass case that, you know, and then um the COVID happened and we were shut down. But we're actually, Brian, in several of the establishments gonna put everything behind one glass case that's easily pinned up. Um we previously had them behind frames. They were eight by ten frames in most of the establishments. In fact, they still are in the establishments um, with the exception of Pearl Street which is kept in the box office 
um, because we were years and years ago because kids were smashing the glass that were where it was it was at the ground level not behind the bars because there's multiple bars there and um, one of the building inspectors years and years ago I think it was um, Anthony Patillo had asked that we have it um, at the ground level which is when they come in as opposed to behind the bars at least that's what he had requested for his um, for the, the the actual uh permit for attendees and so um that's the only establishment where we had and everything else is behind the bar and they were all typically done behind uh, you know eight by ten frames that's great okay. um chief casper do you have any any suggestions are you for sanction or anything or anything else to say no i think as long as the the license is posted we'll be fine Thank Same you. Sure thing. Um, so, commissioners vote now, Annie, on, on, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I trust it's going to be hung, if not already. I think you just make a motion on him having a picture emailed over. Right? So, you need to have a motion on whether or not a violation actually happened, and then you need to have a motion on, whether or not they'll well if there's a sanction you'll need to have a motion for that i also um, have one thing i just want to say eric you said you don't serve food at the basement is not no there's no there's not a restaurant there so you have a common vic license yes we do mm -hmm. and a, and your license is classified as a restaurant license meaning you have to serve food mm -hmm. So oh, it, it it's it we haven't served food there and I can't tell you how long. I guess nobody maybe knew that. Um I think this is a separate issue. Um but I would suggest um amending your retail license to classify it as a general on premise, which mm -hmm. is which is for if you have a general on premise license, you are not required to sell food. Right. Um I would suggest exploring that to, gotcha. to protect yourself in the future because now that we know. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time, I think, and I'll, I'll, I'll research that. And I think, unfortunately, as we're not going to be open for a very extended period of time, we'll have plenty of time to research and get in. If okay. we have to get we have to get back in front of you. When is the next meeting, Annie? Is that in September? Um, we haven't really talked about it yet, but there will probably be another meeting mid-August. Um, and then... I, I don't know, but if you want me to keep you in the loop on when the next meeting is, I can certainly do that. Wouldn't mind. That would be great. Yeah, sure. Thing. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. So we're thank almost you. done. So we, have a, <laughs> we have a motion then for uh, whether or not there was a violation. I'm not. Oh, does someone else want to make that motion? Yes, I, I'm not exactly sure how to word, word it, but I make a motion to what state that the violation did occur um, uh, as detailed in item six of the agenda. Can I do that or do I, should I, do I need to read that out? That's, that's okay. I think that, that does it. Okay. I didn't know since we have a court reporter, I didn't know if that was fair. <laughs> I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And... And Annie, is that it, or do we need to vote on no sanctions? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, if, I, if you choose to have one, no, I think I think we need something either way. Okay. So a motion on that. Yeah. Okay. So I will make a motion to not impose any sanctions on uh, the license holder as outlined in item number six. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay. Thank you. Last agenda item for your patients. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for that we need to do, Annie? Or we're good? Uh, note the violation. We're done with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh. Item number seven, clerk's update. Uh, yeah. Discuss tips for Rias Baishas LLC, DBA, Ibiza Tapas. Yeah, uh, so I guess we need to kind of discuss next steps, whether you want to schedule a hearing for a possible suspension or revocation. 
Yes. I mean, I don't, he's, we denied their application to change their DBA, right? Based on the license that was issued to that business. Mm -hmm. um, do they still have the, the Biza Tapas on their sign out front? I mean, I'm, I'm sure I haven't, I haven't driven by. It was there last time I drove by. I don't, am I allowed to chime in? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm their landlord. If you don't, if you want me to chime in, it's still on, it, it was still on their sign the last time I drove by. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's Jeremy's a great contribution to the business community downtown he's doing a great business and i feel badly for him that that this um loophole was found and is now in his lap and you know i don't want to have a hearing to have to discuss revoking or canceling his license but he has to continue to do business based on who the license was issued to that's my opinion Helen, you were with us for that conversation at the last couple of meetings that Jeremy's come to. Right. Right. And I think that's what I was stating at the last meeting, that that's why I wanted to be cautious of not granting them a new DBA, because then there would be the chance that the, it would be challenged, the, that the license would be challenged, because it sounds like that's how it's slid through previous to either of us being on the commission. Um, and that was sort of for better or worse, that was the way that it was, the license was able to be transferred. Um, and whether or not that was a mistake is not something we can look back and, and change, but I guess we need to be consistent as we move forward. So, you know, I, I, and so at this point, their lawyer is appealing to ABCC about the DBA or is checking, I don't, what's the latest? I, I'm not sure. He wanted us to send him a letter giving him the reasons for disapproval, which we did. So, but assume Attorney Evans is going to appeal it just because I have worked with him a lot in the mayor's office and it just that seems like something that would happen. Um, but now that we've now that we've talked about it and we've not allowed the change of DBA. Eric, you have a call holding on 812. I guess they can't really, we can't really allow them to continue doing business when we've made it known that they're not operating in compliance of their license. Or are they now? I mean, are they because they haven't changed their DBA? Uh, you know what I mean? But they're... But they're trying to. <laughs> but everything is homestead. I mean, there's no, the only iteration of Ibiza Tapas is on the side. It's so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, yeah, I... Can you find out if, they, if, if his attorney has appealed it and let them um, conditionally continue pending whatever the ABCC decides? If, I mean, I understand maybe if it was just sort of sitting in limbo indeterminately, feeling uncomfortable with that, but if they're, if we are waiting to hear from the ABCC, it feels to me like that might be a way to allow him to go forward pending a more formal resolution. That makes sense to me. Yeah, and so what is it, when he appeals it to ABCC, what, what exactly is he asking for? Is he asking for uh the abcc to say yeah you can change your dba and you can still hold on to the license and is that is that a state level decision or is it whatever we've done here in northampton i just well it's I guess, a, yeah, wrote the legislation and wrote the language that's vague that doesn't um on you know on reading it it appears it has you know it has to be that dba so i think that the appeal is for them to decide if that's if that's the level the type of clarity or not is that right annie that they i guess it, it's like the abcc doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it i mean they do but 
they don't because the legislation was passed by the legislature. Right. So, so the interpretation is going to be how we interpret it. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know how it's going to shake out. I really don't. I mean, yeah. Well, I think for the, I mean, I, I don't think we have an answer to this agenda item, to this question. I like Amy's suggestion to, um, during this limbo period, have it be conditional on the ABCC's response. I don't know, but that's just kicking the can too. I'm completely aware of that. Do you have any thoughts, Brian? Well, to bring me up to speed. Um... So this is about uh, this is about the Ibiza Tapas, the license that was issued to Ibiza Tapas, and then Ibiza turned into Ibiza Tapas Seven Song, with the owner of Ibiza Tapas holding, uh, still holding ownership in that in the entity. He's now long gone. Ibiza Tapas Seven Strong became Ibiza Tapas Homestead. So the license is on its third iteration of a restaurant. And the, the, our interpretation of the license and the attorney Seawall's interpretation of the license is that it was issued to the entity doing business as Ibiza Tapas, that restaurant at that time. And that restaurant doesn't exist anymore. So is it appropriate for that license to continue to be used three restaurants later? And now that restaurant, Homestead, has, has um, come to us. They applied to change their DBA, keep their LLC, but change their DBA to Homestead and remove the Ibiza Tapas entirely. And we declined that application based on the reading of the um, license that they were given, which the license was given to Rias Basha's LLC, LLC DBA Ibiza Tapas. Right, and he's, I remember doing that. So now he's gone. I remember the transition. Can't they, so, and then the second people that owned, are they still there? They, they're the ones with the name change, so they did too. So does it go back to purchasing the license from the original holder? And then it changes in sequence? I mean. It should, the license, the nature of the license, it should have gone back to the city when the business closed. Right. It was granted. So that's, that's right. I remember that because of the special legislation. Right. So they tried to avoid that. Yeah. But the issue is that the main corporate entity hasn't changed just that last DBA part. Right. So the question is, does that matter? Why are they holding strong on the name? Why do they, they want to change to. it? They can't change it because if they change it, then they're not, they're not in compliance with the special act and the city could take the no, license back. I'm, I'm asking on the other end, like why change it to Homestead? Why not just keep it whatever the license says? I mean, people are still going there. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a well, they technically did. They kept a visa top that says the sign and then added a bigger sign below that says Homestead. I mean, everything's I under Homestead. And now, you know, and it's, you know, Jeremy runs a great restaurant and he wants to brand it on his own and not be hindered anymore by a name that doesn't make any sense for the type of experience he offers in his restaurant, but. And so there's no legal way to unravel this without losing the license back to legislation? It would go back to the city, but no, there's no, we so have- the city. Right, because the city granted the okay, license. Okay, we, we are the entity of the city. Why doesn't it come back to us? We reissue it as his request. You can't, you can't just reissue it to one, you'd have, we'd have to hold a lottery. Oh, uh, so it goes back to lottery. Hmm. Um, but so attorney Seawald, now he, he says it's up to the license commission to decide whether to hold a formal public hearing for the purpose of canceling or revoking the license due to failure to do business as a visa top up. So that's- Didn't the license commission fail in the beginning at the first transition? But they never came to, no one came to the License Commission to transfer it. The last time that they were in front of the Commission was when they got the license, the Special Act license, to do business as a visa top us. Like no one's come. I remember the first holder being in there in front of us and stating that he wanted to retire, leave, or whatever, and sell this. And I think everybody's hands were tied, you know, because it would go back to the lottery. And right. And so instead of doing it the right way, they kind of just let it go. Did it 
did it all themselves. So do you let it go until, <laughs> not until, um, I guess you can, I mean, the law is a law, I don't know. I was thinking, you know, because we obviously as a commission, not we, these individuals, but the license commission made the mistake early on. Now that we legally know about it, we have to correct it or do we turn a blind eye and it goes, I, I don't know, you tell me what the law states. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, he, Attorney Seawald says it's up to us, but it's not our opinion, is it? It's not, I mean, how is it up to us if we have to follow the letter of the law? If we choose not to do anything and let, and let it go the way it is, then what? We're liable? I mean, is that even a possibility? I mean, first of all, it wouldn't be fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be following the protocol for, yeah. We wouldn't be following what's written in the special act. Oh. Hmm. But I guess, yeah, then there's the question is why is it at this point? Because clearly it has been followed for the past restaurant. Because they would have gone back into the lottery. That's for a few years. Yeah. Because they would have lost it then. Yeah. Um, so there is that fairness on both sides. It is tough to like now we're suddenly revoke it because we've had enough discussions and the mistake was made previously and, and now we're going to correct it. And, and Jeremy and company are going to be punished for it. Um, so that, that's hard, honestly. Mm -hmm. but I, it's, um, I don't know if there's any, is there any, I mean, there's no possibility of are there licenses for sale out there i don't know if some kind of transition can be made i don't know and i'm not trying to skirt around anything i'm, I'm just i need clarity on how that works if they could yeah i mean there's city. a few there's a few That's licenses that are available on the open market like you they'd have to buy it from the current license holder Right. And that was my point. And that's it's just to Andrew's point, who's got the money right now? We're already suffering. Right. Do we have even 50000 to throw at a license? I would say well, the short answer is no. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely not going for 150 anymore. That, no, I mean, no. The last one that was sold was like 62.5 or something. So, they're, they're de I mean, that's still obviously a huge chunk of change, but. Yeah. So, and if we were to go for it and revoke it, um, which seems rough, then it comes to the city and then there's a lottery for it? Is that, or, or it just goes into the pool of... It, like, it comes yeah. back to the city, we take applications, we review them, make sure everyone, they would be granted a license and then we choose, and then we pick randomly. Mm -hmm which is what happened last time for then the mayor to go and get these extra special act licenses because of the lottery. Right. And then, forgive my ignorance, and then were they purchased? Was it you have the op option to buy this license? Is they that were purchased. It was just given. Given but paid face value every year. Given right? for those for those businesses to, to um, make it doing business as the business that was given the license which yeah. is which is why it's kind of like okay you got this license for free yeah so that's where it's like if if they paid an arm and a leg we would it matter if they did in fact pay an arm and a leg when homestead bought out uh, well, he shouldn't have bought it out i mean it, you can't yeah. Be, yeah so can i ask a question sorry to interrupt but um why can't they keep the name originally and then add a dba to change it i don't understand because, because the legislation is written as that it was granted to the llc dba abiza tapas like it's written specifically in the language yeah. if they just did rias boxius llc with no dba it would be fine they would have they would ha still have to operate as that that llc but they could have whatever DBA they want. Can't they just leave it that way and then just hang whatever sign they want with small writing that puts on there the LLC? 
They've already well, done that. That's how they're operating now because the Beaver right. Tapas is up there small and then Homestead is underneath it. It's a bigger size. And then what happens if there's, if this happens and there's a new, there's new restaurant ownership and a whole new restaurant concept. And it, yeah, it's just. If there's a new restaurant and they want to do it, then I think when this, these people, because the, here's, here's the thing, all right. The license commission failed on the first part when they should have done this. So the next time that it comes up for sale, if it does, then I, then it goes back to lottery. What so, do you mean the license commission failed? I guess I'm not understanding that. Well, we, failed, we failed. I was, I think I was, I can guarantee I was on the board at that time. Uh, Bill was the chair and, um, I, I'm pretty sure we should have never allowed this to happen right from the, the get-go. We should have said, well, listen, if you're giving this up, it has to go back to the lottery and you can take your chance on getting the license. And that would have been the steadfast thing or, you know, the immediate thing, because that's where we're at now. Correct me but if they I'm never wrong. came to the license commission to request a transfer. They, they did. Just... When it was, when it was the original Ibiza Tapas, Juan and I just remember seeing it in the, reading about it in the paper yeah the whole seven strong curve. right so that was that first time but this this second time so there's there's a one owner who's stayed from seven strong to homestead and he's i, I think he's a silent partner at this point but they're they didn't transfer the license they changed their manager so you're saying that they did come before the license commission I they were they were both standing in front of us in front in front of me I was there. Okay. I think there should be minutes of 100%. I'm reading a yeah, Gazette article now about it. <laughs> but we might be talking about different times, Annie. I'm talking about the first time this happened when the license commission allowed Biza Tapas to become a Biza Tapas 7 strong. Okay. I I guess I didn't know that. Yeah, so that that occurred there was an acknowledgement by the commission that it was being done on a hair that it was kind of like you know well, well let's see what, how the, I, the how it shakes out or something like that and then and i could almost see how the, that decision was made because juan suarez was still owner of it so the person who the person who was operating the business who was given the lottery license was still holding ownership he's completely gone and the transfer to homestead was just administrative um transfer like change of manager or something like that when that happens yeah i mean just a uh, sierra grill has one of those like the same license under that special act he yep. has come to me time and time again wanting to know if he can transfer it if he can sell it what he can do because he wants to get rid of it and it's like he can't but homestead a few block or a few storefronts down can so it just yeah. it just doesn't seem right it's 100 percent not right it's not but That's I think it sucks. It we sucks. made a mistake as a commission but now are we still dealing with the same gentleman that took it from the original owner or is well, there a third party in there it's, benson has been there and he's still on the llc um, but Jeremy is the license manager, and he's like the chef for home. The chef owner portion of it. We're still dealing with the same people from the original when they chant when they they called it Seven Strong. They're only on paper. Uh, they're gone. So this they're, is the third transition. They're on paper, but they're not. Um, they're not managers on record. They're. I think maybe he's. I'd have to look up the the card on the Secretary of State website, but. Benson Hyde is still holds ownership, but is not involved in operations, from what I can tell. The law states you have to be involved in operations to hold the license. No, no, you can just be on the LLC. I mean, if you were if you were the license manager, the manager of record, you have to be on the premises for a certain amount of hours. You. So let me ask you this. So we've already made the mistake, okay? And when I say we, just the, the, the commission prior to Natasha and, and Helen. So we've made the mistake. We've granted that um, not knowing or whatever the deal is, but it's still kind of the same people. So is this still just a minor uh, granting? In my opinion, um, 
and if there is another transition as a sale in the first, then it goes back as the lottery. I mean, do we just push it through because we've already acknowledged and we made the mistake and they have it and we've done it once. So now we have to do it again, but we can't allow anybody new to do it. And if they lose that license or they want to be done with that and transfer the restaurant to someone else, well, you can certainly transfer your restaurant and sell your restaurant, but you lose your license. It goes back to the lottery and hopefully you can get it back or you have to buy a new, you know, one of available on the market. So is that legal? Is that um, something that can be pushed through? So did Seawald leave it up to us as our interpretation, our opinion to do something like that? Because I mean, I would hate to put these guys out of business for that. We've, we made the mistake. It's not unfair to him. It's unfair to O'Brien. I get it. But we're, we're acknowledging the mistake now, and I feel like we have to see the mistake through 100% because it's not his fault. We should have said no and put it back to the lottery that day, you know, right when they first came to us and tried to, to do the change. I don't know anything about this, about that. I, I, <clears throat> I have to research that, that when they came before the commission. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I have to look into that. So barring that information, my, my true question and all that rambling is, do we continue the, to allow the mistake to live its, its way out? You know what I mean? Until say they want to sell that restaurant and then everything gets reset to normal. So do we just, yeah, there it is. Go for it. You know, here's your new name. I don't know, because we already made that mistake. Uh, and will the ABCC kick it out if you try to do something like that? I honestly don't think that the, the mistake you're talking of really holds any weight here. Right. So, well, I'm just trying to do, you know, like what Natasha was saying, that it's a sad thing that, you know, these people are going to be forced to give up their license. You know, for what? It wasn't their fault. You know what I mean? Well, they've, they've had an advantage with this loophole that was manipulated by others. And there's, there's just a tremendous amount of unfairness around that to other businesses. And that's equally as difficult to wrestle with as it is thinking about, you know, this guy who's got a, a great little restaurant and brings something different to Northampton and the license is in question. I agree. Um, I have to, I have about three more minutes where I can stay on the call and I really apologize for that, but I have a immovable work commitment. Um, how do we finish this conversation, Annie? I don't, it's, and feel free to continue discussing it and I can step away, but I feel like I, we keep coming up against, you know, we all just feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right you know yeah and i guess that's where we kind of have to just like take our feelings out of it i mean yeah. no one wants this to happen but now that it's brought to the forefront it just we can't let it g linger like this um yeah i'd again like to say if he has gone to the abcc i would mm -hmm. ask for some um allowance of continued operation until the ABCC has a chance to make a determination. I mean, I can't imagine, um, I, I completely agree with you, Annie, this has gone on for a long time. We've talked about it a lot. It has to be resolved, but I just, it's such a painful time for the business community that even though we know it's wrong and it shouldn't be happening, it's, um, it feels deeply immoral to me to push the issue and take a license and revoke a license, even if they shouldn't have it. Is there anything he can do by going to legislation for himself? I mean, can he write a letter and, and talk to somebody and, and you know, our, our city, you know, or not our city, but I mean our state rep or somebody to help him out with it? 
Well, and I suspect, you know, what's gone to the ABCC is just an appeal. And like Annie, I think you've already said, what is, what is the ABCC going to say about what's legislated? Are they, are, they're not going to put themselves in a position of interpreting that legislation. I mean, they do have general counsel, so maybe they'll kick it there. Every time I try and talk to them, they say you need to consult with your city's attorney. So yeah. who knows if it will just be kicked back to us and it's a, and if maybe it's a conversation or a something in court between attorney Evans and attorney Seawald. I, I don't really know. Um, and no one wants to take their license away. And I know it's a hard time, but we also just sent a cease and desist to Andrew because we know he was doing something wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, and Homestead could have, um, they, could, they could apply for wine and malt. This is just their full liquor, the liquor aspect of it, which I know is majorly significant, but. Yeah, and, um, I mean, there, and there are other licenses, I mean, there's like other, there's, there are licenses available. Um, I mean, if what we've learned, they cost an arm and a leg, but I mean, we've learned a lot about cordials today. Yeah, I mean, if, if that lines up all is accurate, um, there could be ways to mitigate some of the impact on on a business if that full liquor license was revoked. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems, I don't know, in terms of the, you know, I understand what you're saying, Brian, too. It's sort of like we've let it go this long. It does seem terrible to revoke it. Certainly, we would say if there's going to be any transition of a restaurant, but it's very clear at that point, we would step in and say, right. you can do this again. We, um, and, as, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to finish to say they've used this loophole of the DBA, and it seems like well, if they're going to use that, they have to stick to it. That was essentially why I refused the DBA change. Right. And maybe it's if they insist on changing the DBA change or making the DBA change, then that's when we say, we will approve that and thank you for your license back. I mean, I yeah. don't, you know, that's what yeah, it is. So, I mean, yeah. suck it up and, and keep with uh, the name you have, so to speak. But yeah, I don't know. And I don't know, I guess from a business standpoint, I'm sure that there must be all sorts of advantages to actually, you know, I don't know if they just want to make it right. Um, you know, so I don't know how painful it is for them to keep this DBA of these to top us. I don't know what it's keeping them from doing or if it just is complicated when it comes to taxes or if there's something else that, you know, is going I on. Think they, I think they really just want to be in compliance, which is yeah. what which is how attorney Evans made it sound. Um, I that impression when, I mean, Jeremy's sat in on meetings before and wanted to keep, be informed about this. And I, I think you're right. I think he does want to be in compliance. Yeah. But can it be in compliance as Homestead? No, it can be in compliance as DBA B's topics. I mean, that's, that's where it's compliant. Yeah. I think, yes, yes. But I, I think attorney Seawog would then say it's a visa tapas on paper, but it's not actually doing business. It's not a tapas restaurant. It's not a visa tapas. Like menus, uh, advertising, mar everything is homestead. Mm -hmm. I mean, to that note, and then I do have to go, um, that, I, I agree with I agree with that, but the concept of the restaurant, the name of the restaurant's a thing. The concept is another thing. So if somebody wants to start selling hot dogs at Ibiza Tapas, that's great. But they're still Ibiza Tapas. You know, I mean, the fact that the the word tapas is in there, I think we're kind of like getting hung up on in terms of, but it's not a tapas restaurant anymore. Um, no, it's not a bees a tapas. It's anymore. not a bees a tapas anymore. But there was the but their attorney kept saying that formula didn't work for them, so they're not doing. They're no longer a tapas restaurant, so that's why they have to change the name. Well, it it, it didn't work for Juan and Benson and Sebastian, right. not for right. Jeremy because he is a completely new. Yeah. 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 Um. Can I step out of the meeting and have you guys close it? Or do I 
how does sure. yes yeah, i'll just i'll just mark you down that you left at 5 38. okay i'm really sorry about this um i can i'll make whatever september meeting work that you guys because okay. i think the scheduled <clears throat> meeting in september helen can't attend so right. <clears throat> hopefully brian yes. and helen can both be at that it is the first it's wednesday it's what day is that sixth it is the second september 2nd wednesday september 2nd yeah i can do that i can do that okay okay thank Great. you guys so much thanks helen or yeah. natasha yeah <clears throat> yeah i i'm just at a loss of how we finalize this i really am um just because it's been lingering, I guess, since, you know, I keep hearing about it since I've been on the commission, but. Um, I mean, I know Alan Seawald has talked to you guys before about it. If you want, I can have him come back to the September meeting and you can talk to him about it then. <clears throat> That's kind of my point. We've talked about it and not, yeah. and we've done nothing about it. Yeah. So. I mean, other than him trying to say, yeah, I want that in my name, you know, I, the old adage is it's uh, better to ask forgiveness and not permission. I mean, he should have just kept doing what he was doing, in my opinion, but I guess you, you can't do that either. Yeah, I know um, Attorney Seawald said that Attorney Evans wanted to bring it to a head. Like he wanted, because it's been such a point of So our question should be to Evans is, are they prepared to purchase a uh, open license on the market? Because if you bring it to head, that's what's gonna happen. It's going back to lottery and it's not guaranteed that they're gonna get it. I think he his interpretation of the law is different from attorney Seawald. So I think that's kind of why he wanted to bring it up because he thinks that he, his interpretation is valid and correct. And he, I, I think he thinks he'll maybe win. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so in summary, Brian, I think his inter he was just saying the LLC is the same. It doesn't matter what we're, the DBA is just a little, you know, is an add-on. So the DBA is not what's important. It's yeah, he, he said the, it, the DBA is just an identifier. Right. Um, and it shouldn't matter whether they're DBA Joe Schmo, um, it's still Reish Baksha's LLC. You're saying so for tax, like you said, otherwise business reasons, tax reasons, so on and so forth, it'd be beneficial to put it in their own name. I agree. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just that interpretation, the way the, the license reads, it says the whole thing with the DBA and he's saying the DBA piece of that is not important. It's just, as long as we're keeping the LLC, we could be called anything. You know, and, and we all are aware of what happened, that the, it was this workaround, that you actually are two new restaurants. <laughs> you know, there's been two new restaurants that are disguising themselves as the same restaurant that got the original license. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know where that leaves us. I mean, yeah, another discussion with Alan doesn't, so, yeah, I think what you were suggesting earlier, Annie, that maybe it's uh, there's some kind of litigation between Attorney Evans and Seawald and it's decided there. I'm not sure at this point if it's us or if we, you know, unless it's yes, you can change the DBA, but we'll, but you need to return the, the license if you do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just confusing about where the license commission is, you know, what our role is, as Brian has been asking, you know. I mean, just ad-libbing, it brings me back to, you know, the rumors of, of you know, Massachusetts just going to open it up like Florida and every other state in the uh, United States to just grant as many damn licenses as businesses want to have, you know what I mean, as a revenue maker. I mean, I don't understand. I guess it's per capita, but yeah, it just seems foolish. You have a, a city that used to be a destination city still still is but you know why we have to limit businesses and jump through loopholes to find five special licenses it's so crazy to me you know mm -hmm. just should be pro business and that's it you know grant the license and be done pay your bill thank you very much so 
I mean, yeah, they did they did explore that, and it is an antiquated system, which there was that task force a few years ago, and they came out with a report. Now it's up to the uh, inspector general, I think, someone to implement them, but who knows? Basically, somebody's got to get paid to push it through. Yeah. You know, politics. <laughs> Anyway, I don't think we're going to solve it in this meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. So what do we what do we want? All of us can make it at the September second, or what are I, we thinking on the next August meeting? Helen cannot make it on the September meeting, but I am almost hundred percent positive that we're going to need another meeting in August because the city is going to redesign down uh, Main Street. So a lot of restaurants are going to want to come outside and they're going to, we're going to need to extend their premise. So why don't we, um, when we figure out that date, why don't we ask the um, presence of Seawald to join us and have that as a discussion at the end. And then we come up with a definitive answer at that meeting, you know, wherever it may be or when in August. So as long as all three of us can be there, you know? Okay. Sound good? Sounds sure. good to me. Helen, you good with that? Uh, sure. Yes. I mean, we need to get, I think we just need to pull him in again and just get his, um, I, know, I mean, we all kind of know where he stands. But I know, I was going to say, everyone sort of knows where everyone stands, so I, I, know. Sure, I don't know how someone's going to suddenly make a decision, but, um, but the decision could be that we let it go till the next iteration of this restaurant i mean but it you know or well that's yeah. it that's my <laughs> point if we can do that legally yeah. with no recourse then that's my vote right. you know what i mean but if we can't then i guess it has to be handled yeah so All right any new business other than that just just that Helen's not going to be at some type of meeting. Brian, you 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 can commit to that meeting. I can do the second, but if the sixth is my birthday, so I'd say no. But the second it should be fine. Okay, and then uh, Helen, when are you leaving? Just in case we need to have an August meeting. Right, I uh, just right around then. Um, I. So you'll be here most of August. I'm here most of August with the exception of like a Friday and a Monday or something like that. And I mean, I, I work some days, but anyway, yeah, if you send it out, I definitely have availability. Okay. I, I mean, I'll obviously reach out before I say anything. Yeah, I do. Uh, I didn't want to bring it up while we were speaking with Andrew and even though I kind of wanted to ask Amy, I'm, I'm really, this whole cordial license thing has thrown me for a loop because like I say, I look at that $12 cocktails and I'm like, oh my goodness, why doesn't, if this is, if he's doing this above board, why doesn't everyone in the city just get the wine and malt license? It's so much cheaper and then throw this in, my God, and, and make $12 oh. cocktails. So, so my question is, I guess, other cities, do they have an extra charge for cordial licenses or that's really how it is? It's just rolled into wine and malt always. Yeah, I, for some reason I can't, I can't find or remember whether or not we talked about an increase of fee. I remember we imposed a fee on pouring permits, um, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't think there was because this was our first one, um, yeah. but it does seem like there definitely should be yeah. an increased fee and is that an easy thing to research like what they yeah, do in yeah, boston yeah. i can i can look into that yeah yeah because i almost wanted to ask amy and then i thought that would be inappropriate <laughs> to say, you, what did myers and Chang pay for their cordial license you know i mean because my goodness i mean kudos to him if you figured this out you know that because yeah i'm just shocked yeah i have to say yeah that you can um, yeah, I'll, I will definitely research that. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that, Brian? Or, or is that enough of that? Just that I'm just amazed at what you can serve with a cordial's license. I guess I, I had no idea. 
So you to, could Andrew, be um, to Andrew's point, um, what do they call it, purveyors or you know whoever yeah. the, uh, that they're getting their stuff from? If that is actually a loophole, that well, let's face it, if it's part of the law, it's not a loophole. It's the yeah. law. It's yeah. we're we are the people making the loophole. So yeah. we just didn't yeah. know the law. So yeah. if it opens up and says, hey you have this and now you have five other or seven other alcohols that you're allowed to mix with other drinks and do it. So be it, you yeah. know, we're not rewriting the law. So if those make the cordial, um, the list, um, you know what I mean? And uh, honestly, it's his right to get a lawyer and, and figure that one out. Um, if we still try to say it's not. Right. So what I'm saying is, if I mean, it sounds to me like from what Amy was saying, and I'm looking at the, you know, the menu for the other restaurants that, yeah, you can absolutely, these are considered cordials. You can make these $12 cocktails with them. My question is, in terms of fairness to other restaurants, <laughs> you know, I just asked Annie to do research into our other cities and towns who have cordials licenses. Are they charging something beyond, or are they just yeah. really rolling it into wine and malt? Because right. that doesn't seem like there's fairness in terms of competition. I don't, I don't necessarily think it matters if they're charging. We could certainly do it, can't we? I mean, we could come up and say, hey, if you want a cordial license, it's going to cost you, you know, what, what's a liquor license cost? $2,500? $2,259. Great. So now we're at eighteen ninety five for a cordial if you want to add that onto your wine and malt. You know what I mean? So be it. You get to add these five liquors for it every year, so on and so forth. And, um, and there it is and make it free and clear to every single restaurant in the city limits to let them know, this is now the law, we didn't know that, you're free and clear to do X, Y, and Z, you know? And then there's still gonna people, there's still be people to buy a liquor license. Now, on the other hand, it's gonna really, really upset the people that have liquor licenses right. that did pay 150,000 back in the day. Yeah. So, or even 50, you know what I mean? But, so that's a hard one, but you know what? you have to get over the, the hurdle because 10 years from now, no one will even talk about it, but some of those hard changes have to be made. So if it's the law, they all have every single right to take advantage of it. Yeah, no, then that's what I was saying. I was commending him for figuring this out. Well, I gotta tell you, the guy that's involved with him is really savvy. Yeah. And there was a lot of people, um, you know, all over the United States. So um, he's very, very uh, smart when it comes to business like that. So. But, hey, you know what? Hopefully it is. Hopefully they break the bank and make a ton of money. I mean, all of them. And I want, to, you know, I want them all to succeed. My biggest fear is when the city or the state says, okay, wrap up your stuff and tuck it away for the winter. I just, I don't know how these people are going to survive. And that's my, my fear. And I wish that we could do something special for them. But, you know, heated tents or whatever they want to do. It's not know. the city, though. It's the state. I know. That's my point. Baker okay. needs to come to a realization on that and say, hey, yeah, we're going to allow this because it'll, it'll cripple the restaurant. I mean, maybe they but, will. I mean, things yeah. change every day nowadays. So <laughs> They haven't even figured out the schools, and that's right around the corner. So yeah. they, they figure out before November with the restaurants. Sure so. All right. Do we okay. have anything new? Anything else? Do we want a motion to close or to adjourn? Yep. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, All in favor. favor. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Hey, Annie, I do have, um, just so you know, I do have some vacation. I forgot my son is in Bethesda, Maryland, so I'll be gone August 14th and 15th, and then uh, the 20. Second, twenty third, and twenty fourth. I think I'll be gone. So August twenty second, twenty third, and twenty fourth. Yeah, and the fourteenth and fifteenth. Not to say that I can't bring this laptop, my wife's laptop, and join in because I'm sure it won't be long anyway. Okay. So I should be able to do that from a hotel or wherever we're at. All right. Thanks for letting so, me know. Yep. Yeah. I guess since we're adding to this, also cross off well. The tw 21st, I assume we're not doing it on a weekend, but so the oh. 21st, yeah, 21st and the 24th, I also am unavailable. Okay. Good enough. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Take care.